you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate it. We're going to talk about dormancy today. Our orchids are lucky in some cases that they go dormant during the colder months of the year. Sometimes I wish I were that kind of an orchid. Sometimes I wish I was just a hedgehog. Either way, they are lucky that they can sleep through the most horrible months of the year. Personal preference, I do not like cold and I do not like winter. So in some cases, our orchids have it well figured out. And when I say some cases, I talk about certain species and then certain primary hybrids. Let me put it out there straight away. Know your orchid. I will be talking about what is dormancy, why it does it happen, plus some care tips. I'll show you some examples. Of course, there are exceptions in the orchid world. Why wouldn't there be? And then at the end, I have a question for you. I want your opinion, so let's get into it. Let's talk about the definition of dormancy. What is it? All living things have some sort of biological clock. For us, it's the fatigue we feel each night, declaring that it's time to sleep or go dormant. For plants, dormancy declares when to prepare their tissue for dry weather or water and nutrient shortage, sometimes also freezing temperatures. Instead of exerting energy in an attempt to grow, they know to stop growing and conserve energy until mild weather returns. So let's take away this whole orchid thing because sometimes panic stations kick in when we talk about orchids and dormancy. Let me give you an analogy. Think of the most evident example of winter dormancy all around you. Lawns each year eventually stop growing and turn brown after it has been cold enough for long enough. And then some climates, the grass is always green. We will get back to that. But if there is a climate where the grass does go dormant, you can still count on it turning green again once the temperatures rise and the climate is more favorable. Going dormant has its advantages because the enzymes driving biochemical reactions don't function well in winter. Dipping temperatures and lack of sunlight slows our orchid's metabolism down even further. Photosynthesis and respiration decelerate and growth halts. So that segue is straight into do all orchids go dormant? And the answer to that is yes to a degree, but some won't show signs by dropping leaves and the time span is much, much lesser, totally depending on the orchid species. With, of course, again, the exception of hybrids that are bred for continuous growth and a quicker bloom cycle. So what does it look like when an orchid is dormant? Well, you're looking at one right now, completely dormant, my dendrobium of phylum. This is a classic example. We'll get back to the examples. But there are orchids that go dormant. They don't drop leaves. We could call it resting. We could just call it the hormones are doing their thing, ready for when the temperatures become more favorable. So an orchid that keeps its leaves, what are you looking for to understand whether it is dormant or not? For that example, I have a Neophonesia falcata. She is in dormancy, and you can clearly see how the color of the leaves has gone blunt. It's a dull color. The leaves are still firm. That is very important. They are not shriveled. They are not dying off. They have just gone a little bit bland. They have lost their shine, their vibrancy. Same with Dendrobium nobili leaves. When they are growing and actively being watered and fertilized, they have a beautiful, beautiful lime green, depending on light levels, color. But when they enter dormancy, the color of those leaves does fade a little bit. The vibrancy is gone. And that is important to note because every single species or hybrid may respond differently with signaling the phase of entering dormancy. And as mentioned on the onset, it is important to know the orchid's care requirements. Some orchids' dormancy period may only last three to four weeks after blooms fade and new growth start. It still has a certain period of a reset, which is what is happening while the orchid is dormant. There is a reset. So understanding the difference of the colors of the leaves before dormancy and during dormancy is paramount for knowing that your orchid is dormant, which now brings me to the subject of when do orchids go dormant? Well, basically everything I've just discussed in brief is the answer to that. 
In winter, when the temperatures drop, day length is shorter. All these factors combined will trigger the hormones and will shut the orchid down. But know that if you have an orchid that is new to your collection and new is once again relative, you may have had the orchid a year and it is not performing the same as it would out in nature. It is possible that your orchid needs to acclimate to your environment and it will take some time to do so and to figure out where it actually is. So consider what your orchid is doing out of season, a possible form of jet lag, but orchid styly. Take that into consideration when you have an orchid you feel should be going dormant. How long have you had it? What is your environment like? Where did it come from originally? Just because it is supposed to go dormant according to your calendar, the internal biological clock of the orchid may disagree and object until it has acclimated which now segue straight into how to care for a dormant orchid. Do they even need any care when they're fast asleep? Trust me, you come and wake me up and just think you're going to serve me breakfast at three o'clock in the morning, there will be trouble. And the same goes for our orchids. If your climate is of very, very low humidity, misting is important because this would simulate the fog and haze of early mornings in the areas where these orchids grow. During dormancy, these kinds of orchids actually prefer the conditions so that they can recuperate and store energy for the coming bloom and growing season. So depriving a dormant orchid of water entirely is not always a good idea if you don't have the humidity to counteract the dryness in the air. And the occasional misting is absolutely fine. If your grow environment is nicely contained and you can keep humidity levels up, a little bit of misting once a week on a dormant orchid will do it absolutely no harm. If, as in my case, I am outside with an extremely dry atmosphere, no humidity whatsoever, very high airflow, I mist my dormant dendrobiums once a day. That is not to be confused with watering because the next point, of course, is we do not water an orchid that is dormant. Misting it does not equate watering. Slightly misting the roots, dampening them off, it's just a touch of humidity. It's not a full-on water. The same with fertilizer. Once the leaves have dropped or they've gone dull and there are signs that the leaves are going to drop, there should be no fertilizer added. That would create root burn or, if the orchid is potted up, root rot very very quickly. If your orchid is acclimated, a drop in temperature and shorter day lengths triggers the start of dormancy and that is when you can start reducing water but watch your orchid. If your orchid is in active growth, no matter which orchid it is, don't stop watering. Especially when it comes to growing in a controlled environment, it is possible that some species won't even drop their leaves, giving the appearance the orchid is not dormant. So let's talk about controlled environments and what to do there. We know now that a drop in temperature and shorter day lengths triggers the start of dormancy, but the drop in temperature is relative once again. So if you're growing in a controlled environment, it is possible that some species won't drop their leaves. Speaking of dendrobiums and deciduous orchids as such that give the symptoms of dormancy. The orchid will hold on to the leaves, giving the appearance that it is not dormant. And it is at this point that knowing the orchid and researching its temperature requirements are super important. Going back to my lawn reference at the beginning, some climates, the grass is always green. If an orchid drops its leaves and is clearly dormant in one climate, it does not mean that it will be the case in a climate with steady temperatures all year round. Now the orchid may still bloom, may, and that is in some cases and species dependent, but it will just be different because it has leaves. Even in this instance, stop watering orchids that have a natural tendency to drop leaves, but don't do so in your environment. The growths have matured. There are no new growth, so the orchid is in a period of rest, and it's best to respond by reducing watering and fertilizing to save the roots from rotting and burning. Then once new growth start, resume watering. But if you're dealing with a seedling, then do not force any of the culture conditions I've just mentioned on them. They are not strong enough to handle the drought. And when we talk seedlings, I also mean keikis detached from a mother plant. A top tip, never 
force an actively growing orchid even while out of season to go dormant. Continue the care as per usual, except that the growth may be stunted because of the time of year, but I highly recommend to grow out of season growth to their maximum potential. This adds to the strength and storage structures as well as grow more roots for the future well-being of your orchid. Eventually it will calibrate itself to match your environment and grow accordingly. Just like when we travel, we have jet lag. Now let's go and check out some examples from what I've just mentioned. So in front of you, we have been looking at Dendrobium aphyllum. It's classic. It's a perfect example of orchid in dormancy. Right now it is dormant. Eventually it will start to form nubbins on the canes that form into blooms. And toward the end of the bloom cycle, new growths will start straight away. And that goes for the anosmum as well. But now let's look at Dendrobium tortile. This is an example of an orchid that has a dormancy period, but holds on to the leaves of the canes over a two year time frame. So here we see that not all resting or dormant orchids drop their leaves as a golden rule. And the same behavior pattern with Dendrobium nobilis. And then there can be some confusion that creeps in that orchids that do like a temperature drop are automatically winter resters or orchids that go into a period of dormancy. That is not the case. Because we are looking at Victoria Regina now, classic example of an orchid that does not go dormant when temperatures drop. Leaf drop is a normal process of older canes. That doesn't mean the orchid is going dormant, but the growths are still growing. The orchid is an active growth despite temperature drops. And the Dendrobium exile has the same pattern. So a temperature drop, reduction in light levels does not equate that an orchid is going to go into dormancy and should not be forced into dormancy. If it's not an active growth, the reduction of watering at the occasional misting. But to give orchids like that a dry winter rest will more often than not cause the demise of the orchid. And you can see here on my community mount, I have other dendrobiums also on the same mount as my aphyllum. Same care, everything out here is exactly the same, no special treatment. They fall into the category of cool growing orchids. They will drop their leaves sporadically, occasionally. They will stay leafed out, but when dormant, their leaves start to go dull and look a little bit ratty. But in some cases, like with the Dendrobium Victoria Regina, look, actively growing new growth. So we're back to know your orchid. And if you read the information in a culture sheet that says low temperatures, etc., etc., that doesn't equate to dormancy and that it will be deciduous. Some orchids kick into active growth during the colder season because they are cold, cool growers. I hope that kind of gives a clearer picture about dormancy, what to look out for, even when an orchid holds onto the leaves, what the leaves appearances are and get an understanding of the orchid's current internal affairs. <laughs> but before I end this video, I'm going to leave you with a question and I am interested to know your opinion on is a dormant leafless orchid in bloom in actual fact dormant, waking up or actively growing? That would interest me. I have my thoughts on that. That could possibly be another video, but I would like to know your opinion. And after this video airs, I will be putting up a poll in my community post and you can vote on that and leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on is a dormant leafless orchid in bloom, in actual fact dormant, waking up or actively growing. I hope that this video was somewhat helpful, that it wasn't confusing, if any further clarification is needed, please, please use the comments. I'll be more than happy to be more precise on a case by case basis to deal with them in a separate video. I really appreciate your time watching. Thank you so very, very much. I wish you a very beautiful day on one condition. You stay safe, please. Take care. Bye. <laughs>